This is a capacitor of one third. And this is one ohm. And I'm looking for V out. The voltage right there, plus to minus. Now, if you remember, last time we said we can seven, not seven eyes, we can find the equivalent circuit, which is really seven almost. If I chop it right there, and find the equivalent value. Now, this one here, it's your Z1 or Z input, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> I'll pull my book out. I looked for it before I started. As if you try to thevenize the backs, the front side of that circuit. We did it both ways. We did the front and the back side. If you try to thevenize the front side of the circuit, you can take the source, replace it with A times the value of the source, and the Z value, which is Z input right here, you can replace it with A squared times that number. Now, what is A? A is the ratio of N2 to N1. So A equals the number of turns on the second one to the number of turns on the first one. So 1 to 2, which is a half. Uh, Yep. So what's going to happen, oh, I forgot to write the value of the source here. And this was 12 U sub T. So if I try to find the equivalent, A is 1 half, the value of this source will be what? A times V1. A is 1 half. 1 half times 12, that'll be 6 U sub T. This is going to be a squared times 8 plus 2 Henry. This is 1 third. <coughs> and 1 ohm. Again, A is one half. So if we do the math, this is going to equal to what? Bless you. A squared is one fourth. What's one fourth times eight? So this is six U sub T. That resistor will be what? Two ohm. 8 times 1 fourth is 2. That inductor becomes what? 1 fourth times 2, which is what, a half? But why, um, why is that 1 half now? It's A squared times that. And A is 1 half, A squared is 1 fourth. So I'm using the equivalent of the ideal transformer. <coughs> so I didn't do anything yet. I just simplified the problem so I don't have to deal with mutual inductance and all that stuff. Uh, the ratio of N2 to N1, I mean, I1 to I2, N2, uh, V1 to V2, I can get rid of them and use that. Now I'll switch it to Laplace, S domain. Dot? Yeah. Oh, here you mean? Yeah. 
Is there ever now a, it's gone. Is there ever an, an, yeah. an equation where the dot would be, there would only be one dot, or is there always going to be two dots? You're always going to see the two. Okay. I'm trying to think like yeah. the yeah. no. way that would work. So now let's change it to S domain, Laplace. The Laplace of U sub T is what? 6 over S. 6 over S. The Laplace of the resistor? 2. two. Inductor SL. This be S over 2? S over 2. The Laplace of this 1 over SC. C is 1, 1 over S. <coughs> and this is 1. And now this is V out as a function of S. And I can combine all of these guys into one impedance. I can make it what? I'll use a box for that. 2 plus S over 2 plus 1 over S. Can I find V out now? What would I use? Yep, voltage division. V out as a function of S is equal 6 over S times 1 over the sum of them. When you add this to that, that'll be what? 3 plus S over 2 plus 1 over S. Now, if I multiply the top and the bottom by 2S, by 2S, I will have what? 12 s squared plus 6 s I think plus the 2 Wait, sorry, I, uh, I'm multiply I'm top and bottom by 2 s okay, multiply the top and bottom. to get rid of the fractions so each one was 5 so 6 s times 2 s and 6 over s times 2s, s over 2 times 2s, 3 times 2s, 1 over s times 2s. Okay. Nice. If I use the quadratic equation to solve that one, the roots are real. So let's see, s squared plus 6s plus 2, I can see the roots are real, negative 6, plus or minus the square root of what? 36 minus 4 times 2, which is 8, divided by what? 2. Is that 28 here? Square root 28 is what? 2 to the square root of 7 over 2, because 4 times 7 is 28. So that's negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. So if you want them as decimal numbers, where's my calculator here? One of them is negative 3 minus the square root of 7 <coughs> I get negative 5.65 The other one, negative 3 plus the square root of 7, and that's a negative 0.354 if you want to. So if you add them, you get negative 5.65. Yep. Negative. So I can take V out as a function of S which is 12 over s squared plus 6s plus 2. And I can rewrite that as k1 over s plus 5.65 plus k2 over s plus 
0.354. That's what the bottom is equal to. So again, if you, re if you factor the bottom, you end up with this. I should have wrote that first. But the acid plus 5.65, right? Yes. <coughs> God. Thank you. Yes, no, it's I got the flu. So let's just keep coughing. I wish it was neat. So now I'm going to find K1, K2. K1 will be 12 over S plus 0.354 when S equals negative 5.65. And let's see what that number is. 12 divided by negative 5.65 plus 0.354. I got negative 2.266. And K2, <coughs> excuse me, is sitting on top of 0.354. So I gotta take the 0.354 out. When S equals negative 0.354. You do the math, I got 2.266. So I can write V out as a function of S to be K1, which is a negative, over S plus 5.65 plus K2, which is what? 2.266 over S plus 0.354. So remember, the process doesn't change. We change it to S domain, which is Laplace. Solve the, the circuit in the S domain in Laplace. Now we have our answer in Laplace. Let's change it back to time domain. Professor? Yes. Uh, you have for the first wash fraction negative 2.666. No, 2.26, 2. 2. 2. 6, yeah, 2, thank you. Control Z for life. I need to really go lay in bed, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, we got some time off. Yeah. Enjoy it. So now my solution is changed to a function of time. It's negative 2.266 e to the power of negative 5.65t plus. 2.266 e to the power of negative 0.354t. And again, in circuits, it's only good for t greater than zero when you walk into the lab and build that. What was the last thing you said? Uh, we always add use of t.